ulnar impaction is a condition uh, characterized by contact of the ulna with the carpus. And it's most commonly associated with ulnar positive variants as you see here, but it can occur in ulna neutral or ulna minus variants, particularly with loading in the, with the uh, forearm pronated. Um, it results in, in many cases, a erosion or tear of the TFCC articular disc. There may be a kissing lesion as you see here in the lunate Signal changes on the MRI correspond to that. There may be a, a non-dissociative lunotriquetral tear, very, very rarely a VC deformity consistent of a LT dissociation. Um, and uh, there are a wide variety of causes from congenital or developmental changes in ulnar length to uh, post-radius fracture uh, shortening and deformity growth arrests like Madelung's or post uh, physeal arrest in fractures, radial head fractures after resection. So there are a whole host of issues. And of course, we know that in the general population, there's a range of ulnar variants as Hull 10 described many, well, 100 years ago. Um, ulnar impaction etiology uh, is varied and in distal radius fractures in particular, uh, treatment depends upon radius alignment. If the radius is short but not altered in terms of slope and radial inclination, a ulnar shortening may, or another ulnar procedure may be satisfactory. Otherwise, a radius osteotomy would be the first uh, recommendation. If it's pure ulnar impaction, you basically have two common options, shortening or wafer resection. Wafer resections can be done open if they're, uh, it, if there is no TFCC tear in particular. And in most cases where there's a central disc tear, you can do it arthroscopically. Ulnar shortening is kind of the gold standard. It was described by Milch back in 1941. These are article uh, photos from his article of a case report. He said that it healed in two weeks after this firm surclass wiring. So he's a better surgeon than the rest of us are, I think. Uh, Ron Lindscheid and, and basically the whole Mayo group back in 85 described uh, a shortening procedure using a plate and screw fixation that sort of uh, advanced the Milch procedure to more modern fixation. And they used it for a variety of treatments, including impingement, for which it has become the gold standard. Ulnar shortening has several advantages. It doesn't disrupt distal articular structures any desired length of the ulna may be resected, including very large differences. And it does seem to tighten to some degree the ulnocarpal ligament complex, which may improve uh, instability at times. But it does require a long, a big scar with a big dissection and uh, lengthy healing times, mean healing times of three months and uh, uh, union taking more than four months or not healing at all are not uncommon. Painful hardware frequently requires plate removal or a second procedure and delayed union or non-union may occur in as many as 20% of patients in some uh, reports. Um, di di distal radial ulnar joint pain or dysfunction may be possible due to excessive shortening or sigmoid notch morphology and uh, also potentially causing arthritis. And in particular, this type C uh, variant in which the uh, styloid is, or the sigmoid notch is oriented facing distally, potentially may cause uh, abnormal contact forces with shortening of the ulna. And uh, this is a risk that may be better avoided with a wafer resection. Um, and distal radial ulnar joint arthritis may occur also in, in shortening very large di uh, uh, distances or uh, when the healing time is uh, prolonged. Again, non-union rates may be high. Smoking definitely is a risk factor in uh, this study from Germany. And uh, in, in smokers, 7.1 months of healing time, I think is probably unacceptably long. Um, however, this study by Owens was a systematic review of uh, ulnar shortening, looking more or less specifically at healing uh, and found that the non-union rate was actually reasonably low in this large series of 1,400 patients. 
and interestingly, it didn't make any difference, at least statistically, whether it was a transverse or an oblique osteotomy. Uh, they had no particular information on time to union or need for plate removal. Wafer resection is, is the less popular option. It was described by Felden and by Renorowski, uh, both in 1992, one as an open procedure, one as an arthroscopic procedure. And um, the arthroscopic wafer today uh, is, is widely uh, practiced. It's indicated when the ulnar plus variant is, is less than or equal to four millimeters in the opinion of most people. Uh, ulnar shortening osteotomy should be used otherwise. And um, the wafer resection uh, tends to work best when a TFCC tear is present. Um, it's minimally invasive. There's no risk of non-union, no hardware issues. Um, and uh, it allows an arthroscopic assessment of the joint, early motion, no casting. Uh, and so that's the real advantage. The potential problems may be excessive resection, may lead to excessive loss of joint cartilage surfaces and therefore should not be done in large defects. And you don't get the secondary benefits of uh, realigning uh, areas of chondromalacia or increasing tension on ulnar stabilizers. Um, <clears throat> and the, the technique is basically fairly simple. You have a look in the joint, you visualize the, <clears throat> the tear, you debride a little bit of the articular disc, and then you put a shaver in the joint in order to clean it up. I'm gonna skip the video, but basically what you do is you, you burr down below the uh, cartilage and subchondral bone, typically over about two thirds of the ulnar head. And here you see what it looks like before and after. <clears throat> the results of wafer resection have been really very good in these two series. Uh, the largest percentage of patients had a good result. Uh, which operations should be done? Well, the, op the uh, papers that compare results between authors basically uh, show results of arthroscopic wafer resection in terms of satisfaction to be, if anything, better than ulnar shortening. And uh, objective parameters of outcome uh, also tend to be equal or better than uh, ulnar shortening. Um, this study by O of 42 patients uh, demonstrated with improvement over time, found that at three months, the wafer procedures were consistently better. And after three months, clinical results were similar, but the complication rates were very much higher, including arthritis, painful hardware, uh, delayed non-union and refracture after plate removal with shortening uh, that were simply not seen in wafer procedures. Um, and another study by Bernstein with similar results wafer similar results with fewer complications. A study by Constantine also with nine of 11 wafers with excellent eight of 11 ulnar shortenings, but only one additional resection in the wafer procedure and five operations to remove painful hardware in the shortening as well as two uh, delayed unions. So in the end, I prefer wafer resection in most circumstances. Uh, the comparative literature supports this point of view. Ulnar shortening is only preferred from, in my practice when there's a large ulnar positive uh, variance requiring a larger amount of adjustment of length. And neither should be, be performed alone in the face of a malunion of the radius with altered uh, radial alignment or in cardiogenic arthritis and instability. Thanks.